Hello and welcome to the news update on Enyumba TV. First, the headlines. Nigeria military court marshals two soldiers of a Kajuna accidental bombing. Police arrest suspected masterminds of Abuja Kajuna Road and raid abductions. Nigeria Railway Corporation raises alarm over activities of vandals on new red track in Abe State. These and other stories, plus foreign, business and sports. I am Mary Inhejirika. Chief of Army Staff COAS, Lieutenant General Tarid Labaja, is commending troops of the Nigerian Army for their commitment and resilience in the fight against terrorism and other security challenges in the country. Labaja gave the commendation while addressing troops of 23 Brigade Nigerian Army at the Gibson Jalo Cantonment Yola Adamawa during an operational visit to the brigade. The army chief told the troops that the army is on a transformational drive, urging that the federal government had been supportive of the drive with the provision of essential compound enablers and personal welfare schemes. He said he foresees in the future the security situation across Nigeria will be improved tremendously, explaining that with the support they are getting from Mr. President, putting everything together will be possible. Defense headquarters say two military personnel will face court martial for the December 3, 2023 accidental bombing on the Tudumbiri village of Kajuna State. Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Boba, revealed this during a press briefing at the defense headquarters in Abuja. Boba said the investigation launched into the incident had been concluded with two personnel indicted. Defense headquarters also dismissed the sit-at-home order declared by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, for May 30, 2024, labeling it as mere propaganda that would not hold sway. Nigeria police has announced the arrest of the alleged mastermind of the attack on the Abuja Kajuna, where some passengers were killed while scores were abducted in March 2022. The mastermind was identified as Ibrahim Abdullahi, also known by the ominous moniker of Mandi. First Public Relations Officer, ACP, Olumuyiwa Adejobi, who met his known in Kajuna on Thursday, also disclosed that the suspect had also participated in the abduction of students from Greenfield University in 2021. Adejibi also added that 48 AK-47 rifles were seized during Mandy's arrest and efforts were underway to identify his sponsors and supplier of weapons. Vice President Kashim Shetima says President Bola Tinibu's economic reforms of the past year saved the life of the nation. The removal of West subsidy and the unification of all segments of the Forex exchange FX market, among other reforms, have pushed the cost of living to new highs. But at the second Chronicle Roundtable in Abuja, Shitima told the gathering that Nigeria is on the right track despite the initial challenge with the economy. He said the reforms were necessary steps, especially the removal of worse subsidy, which he described as the big elephant in the room. Following the aftermath of the gas explosion which claimed the life in Abiyokuta, the Ogun state capital, the federal government said it would stop granting licenses to gas companies with no capacity to build pipelines for gas distribution. This was communicated by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Gas, Iberibe Ebo, when he visited Abiyokuta on an on-the-spot assessment of CNG explosion at Ita Ocean. According to him, the development became imperative to discourage the transportation of compressed natural gas through the roads. A CGN gas truck owned by Gasco Marine, which had suffered a brake failure, rammed into the road barricade and went up in flames, killing one person and raising some vehicles. 
Minister of Works, Engineer David Omahe, is exonerating Reynolds Construction Company, RCC Nigeria, of negligence for the tanker fire incident that led to loss of lives recently in River State. Omahi while also sympathizing with the families of those involved in the incident, however, blamed the recklessness of the true drivers for the inferno and called for enhanced enforcement of driving rules and road safety checks, especially regarding drivers of heavy-duty vehicles. He commended the construction firm, saying contrary to insinuations, the construction work in the area is recording quality progress. 50 frontline civil society organizations, CSOs, in the country have asked the ruling of Progressives Congress, APC, and other political parties to denounce their members who are currently facing corruption allegations as a way of supporting the fight against corruption. Those who read the position of Nigeria's civil society community at a news conference in Abuja where Aula Musa Rafsajani, Executive Director, Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, CISLAC, Transparency International Nigeria, Mr. Chido Onoma, Executive Director, African Center for Media and Information Literacy, among others, noting that transparency and accountability are crucial elements that enable democracies to flourish. The CSOs lamented that Nigeria's so-called democracy has persistently functioned under a veil of secrecy and lawlessness. Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, insists the proposed 615,000 Naira minimum wage is realistic, dismissing claims that some states cannot pay such an amount if approved. This is according to the NLC president, Joe Ajero, in a monitored interview, who said the figure is a product of a painstaking effort through which the Congress captured the cost of living of Nigerian workers and masses in all parts of the country. He further described the figure as essentially an outcome of independent research conducted by the NLC and Trade Union Congress on the cost of meeting the primary needs of an average family around the country. The unionists who suggested states should go into mechanized agriculture, among others, believe self-sufficiency in food production will help Nigeria fight the biting economy. Nigeria Railway Corporation, NRC, has expressed sadness over the activities of vandals on the reconstructed Aba Port Harcourt section of the Eastern Rail Line and called for Aba State community leaders and youth collaboration to safeguard the new track. The Public Relations Officer, NRC, Eastern District, Onyedikachi Onovo, who made the call, lamented that vandals within the Obuzo and Uwe communities in Okwa West local government area of Abe State, as well as in Aba, are currently vandalizing the newly reconstructed track. He explained that it is disturbing that families and communities will sit idly by watching unscrupulous individuals pack the ballast, the crushed rocks, stones laid on the track bed to provide stability, drainage and support to the train tack, keep them in cement bags within their various communities and later use vehicles to move them to sell. Onovo, however, commended the people of Ogwe community for answering the call of the Railway Corporation for collaboration, stressing that the community recently organized themselves and arrested three young men vandalizing the track who are currently in custody. After the break, the news will continue shortly with foreign business and sports update. Please stay tuned. Welcome back and thank you for staying tuned. Over now to the rest of the stories. We'll begin with foreign. Kenya's President William Ruto has appointed the first female commander of the Air Force. Major General Futuma Gaiti Ahmed becomes the first woman in Kenya's history to head one of the military services. She was appointed alongside other leaders, including a new head of the armed forces, following the death of the military chief and others in a helicopter crash last month. 
Major General Ahmed has previously held other firsts in the military leadership that is dominated by men. She is the first woman to rise to the rank of Brigadier and Major General. And on business, Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation has announced a revision of the maximum deposit insurance coverage for banks operating within the country. At a media briefing held in Abuja, NDIC's managing director, Bello Hassan, revealed the new coverage benchmarks. The insurance for deposit money banks has been raised from 500,000 naira to 5 million naira for microfinance banks, from 200,000 naira to 2 million naira for primary mortgage banks, from 500,000 naira to 2 million naira, and for mobile money operators, subscribers pass through from 5 hundred thousand naira to five million naira per subscriber. Hassan emphasized that the update aims to boost that depositor safety, public trust, the inclusivity of financial services and the overall stability of financial sector. And on sports, Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, says it is still working on the details of coach Finidi George's contract, even as it has given the Enimba manager the mandate to start preparing for Super Eagles 2027 World Cup qualifiers against South Africa and the Benin Republic in June. NFF media director Ademola Olajiri said that the Federation has been working on the details of the deal adding everything will be revealed when they are sorted. He also said that the coach has been permitted to pick his assistants and revert to the Federation. The NFF named George as the substantive coach of the Super Eagles on Monday, ending speculations over the identity of Jose Pizarro's successor three months after the Portuguese left the job. The Federation, however, did not reveal the details of George's contract, leading to speculations that the body was forced into making the appointment by external influences. The sports story wraps up the news update on Enimba TV at this period. Before we go, here is a recap of the main points again. In the news, we told you Nigeria military court marshals two soldiers over Kajuna accidental bombing. We also told you police arrest suspected mastermind of Abuja Kajuna Road and raid abductions. And we told you Nigeria Railway Corporation raises alarm over activities of vandals on new rail track in Abia State. We hope you will join us again next time. Please subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell for more. On behalf of the production team, I am Mary in Hejirika. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.